Section 3.3, we're going to start logarithmic functions. The first thing you need to be able to do is switch between logs and exponential functions. Okay, I'm going to color code this a little bit. So log base b of x is equal to y. And if that's the case, then we can say b, that's the base, to the y is equal to x. Okay? So, now that we've got that, we can solve some equations here. Because log base 4 of 16 is equal to 2, that's good. Uh, we want to be able to rewrite it. So we're going to rewrite it in this case. Later on, you'll see why we're doing this. Um, so for now, we're just saying 4 to the 2 equals 16. And that is a true statement, so all good. For part B, we have 5 to the negative 1 equals 0 0.02. I've just moved things around the base to what it's equal to is equal to the of. Here, 8 to the 0 equals 1. And for D, 23 to the 0 equals 1. And both of those are true. We know um, by their exponential rules that anything to the 0th power is 1. So... Okay, this, for these, we're going to go backwards, right in logarithmic form, okay? So we have log base 2 of the 16 is equal to 4. I know this seems redundant, but you'll, be able, you'll see as we get, go further in this section in the next why we're doing this. Log base 27 of the 3 is equal to 1 -third. And here, log base 1 fourth of 16 is equal to negative 2. And these are also true statements, even though it's um, not as obvious when it's in logarithmic form. Okay, so here we go with something that uh, makes this make a little bit more sense why we're doing it. So first of all, I'm going to say we've got log base 12 of 144 equals x. And I'm putting the equals x there so we can rewrite at just like we've been doing. So we've got base 12 to the x power equals 144. And what it's asking us to do is solve for x. Well, we know that 12 squared is 144, right? So what that tells us is that x is 2. Here, we can say equals x again. So we've got 64 to the x power equals 8. Well, 64 to the what power would give us 8? Well, we know the square root of 64 is 8, right? And square root is the same as an exponent of 1 half. So that means that x is 1 half. Next, here, again, we can say equals x. You don't have to do that, but it helps to see a little bit. So 3 to the x is equal to 1 over 27. So what would give us, 3 to the what power would give us 1 over 27? Well, we know if we have a negative exponent, that that's going to put it on the bottom, right? And 3 cubed gives us 27. So it would be 3 to the negative 3 that would give us 1 over 3 cubed or 1 over 27. So x must be negative 3.
okay? Evaluate logarithms. There's two things you need to know here. If you just see log of x, then what that means is log base 10 of x, okay? There is a 10 stuck in there. You just can't see it. Uh, we just to, to um, save time a bit, we don't write the 10 in. If there's another number there, then that's the number that's there. But if there's nothing there, then that means that it's actually 10. And then the other one is log base E, we write as natural log. And we'll see a reason for this later on. Actually, natural log and E cancel each other out. So anytime you see natural log, then that really means log base E. So evaluate each expression. Here we have log base 10 of 100. So we write this as a, and we'll see a, a shortcut for this in a little bit, but rewrite this as an exponent. We'd have 10 to the x equals 100. Well, 10 to the what gives us 100? 10 squared. So that means x is 2. This is log base 10 of 1 ten thousandths. Okay, so rewrite that 10 to the x, and let's write it as a fraction, 1 over 10,000. Well, what would give us 1 over 10,000? Well, we know that it's going to have to be negative to put it on the bottom of the fraction like that. And 10 to the 4th gives us 10,000. If you're not sure, play it around with your calculator until you find the right number. But 10 to the 4th is the one that gives us 10,000. So 10 to the negative 4 would give us 1 over 10,000. This is natural log. Well, natural log of e to the negative 3 is the same thing as log base e of e to the negative 3. And again, we're going to see a shortcut here shortly, but right now, this is the same thing as e to the x is equal to e to the negative 3. Now, back in our exponent rules, we know that if we have the same base, then the exponents are equal. So here, x is equal to negative 3. This one can be rewritten, part d, as log base e, because natural log is log base e, of e to the 10. So that's x, excuse me, that's base e to the x is equal to e to the 10th. So again, here we have our exponents are equal because the bases are equal. So x is 10. Here we're just using a calculator, okay? So not that difficult. You just put in your calculator log of 200, and you should get 2.3110. It wants us to check it using exponents, so all it's asking us to do is rewrite it. This is log base 10, so 10 to the x. would be 200, and we've actually, let's write it like this. If we say equals, then it'll make more sense to us when we check it. So this is 10 to the 2.3110, and that should be equal to 200. For part B, put this in your calculator, log of 0 0.074, that is negative 1.074. To check that, we would say 10 to the 
Uh, did I write this wrong? Yes, I did. It should be negative 1.1308. Looking at the wrong thing. Okay. So, tn to the negative 1.1308 should be point zero seven four. For part C, natural log of 200. Put that in your calculator. 5.2983. To check that, we just say log, natural log, remember, is log base E, so E to the 5.2983 should be 200. And last, natural log of 1.005 is 0 0.005. And when we check that, we should have E to the 0 0.005 should be 1.005. Okay, on to our shortcuts. Log base B of 1 is 0. Okay, why is that? Because if we rewrite it, b to the 0, we know that b to the 0 is 1. So that what this tells us is log of 1 is always 0, no matter what the base is, okay? Whether it's log base 3, just log, which is log base 10, or natural log of 1, it's always 0. Log base b of b is 1. So if the base and what you're taking the log of are the same, then it's 1. Now, why is that? If we rewrite it, b to the 1 is equal to b, right? Okay, so that's why it's 1. Log base b of b to the x is x. Well, that makes sense, right? If log base b of b is 1, then log base b of b to the x is 1 times x, which is x, right? And then it also says that b to the log base b of x is x. And that's just going backwards. Here, this log base b of b has basically canceled each other out and left the x. It's another way of solving equations. And so b to the log base b is also canceling each other out and leaving this with x. So log base 19 of 19 is, guess what? 1. Log base 10 of 10 is 1. Natural log of e, that's log base e of e. That's 1. Log base 273 of 1, that sounds difficult, but nope. If it's of 1, it's 0. Log base one eighth of one zero. Log base thirty of thirty to the tenth power. Remember that log base thirty of thirty that cancels each other, and so ten is all that's left. Natural log of e to the negative twelve. That's the same thing as log base e of e to the negative twelve, which is just negative twelve. So the fact is here is that natural log and E cancel each other out. That's going to be useful to us. 10 to the log of 14. Well, it's log base 10, right? So 10 to the log base 10 of 14 is 14. And 8 to the log base 8 of 5 is 5. Next, we're going to graph some of these guys. Here's what log and natural log look like. Actually, if we were to graph the line y equals x in here, and then we were to graph y equals e to the x, y equals e to the x and log of x are inverses. Okay? 
So that's going to be very useful to us when graphing logs because it's not always easy to graph logs in the calculator. But if we do it using an exponential function and just switch things around because in with inverses, whatever was y is x and x is y, you switch the x and y, then it makes things easier, okay? So, this is going to be very useful to us. So, for example, 7, we've got log base 3 of x, and we want to graph that. If we switch this around, log base 3 of x is 3 to the y equals x, right? It's the same thing. It's equivalent. Let's write it up here. Now that's all fine and dandy except solving it for having it solved for x isn't doing us any good, is it? But if we look at the inverse, the inverse, we switch the x and y, right? So x equals 3 to the y becomes y equals 3 to the x. This is what's useful to us. And so what we're going to do when we're graphing this Instead of choosing our x's and finding the y's, we're going to choose the y's and find the x's. Because we're just flipping things around because we're using the inverse. Okay? And so if we plug in here 3 to the whatever y is up here and find x, that's going to give us our logarithmic function. That's going to give us our graph. And so we've got 3 to the negative 3, that's 1 over 27. 3 to the negative 2, that's 1 over 9. 3 to the negative 1, 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9. 3 cubed is 27. And so we can go over here and graph this. So our first point, that's kind of too small to graph, uh, and so is the second one. Let's start with one-third negative one. That would be right here. Okay, the other ones are just very, very close to the y-axis there, and we don't really need them. The next one is one-zero. Then we have three-one and nine-two. And the last one we can't graph, but that's okay. So what's happening here? is that we're getting closer and closer to the y-axis as we go to the left, and then it continues to rise slower and slower to the right. If, and you don't have to do this, but if you were to graph the y equals 3 to the x, then that would look like... Let's see, we'd switched around. Negative 1 would be 1 third. 0 is at 1. 1 is at 3. Not there. And 2 is at 9. Can't fit it on there, but that's okay. So that would be y equals 3 to the x. And so you can see that there are inverses, and again, that's why it helped us graph our log. Okay? For the next one, uh, I don't have quite, quite enough room over here, and I'm not even going to use the table there that much. But what I'm going to do is the first thing we need to do is identify the parent function. Okay, What's the parent function here? y equals log base 2 of x. Okay, And then using transformations, we're going to move it around, right? Okay, so using that parent function, that is equivalent to 2 to the y equals x, right? The inverse then would be y equals 2 to the x. So that's what we're going to start by focusing on. So with y equals 2 to the x, 
we use some points here, I'm just going to use, oh, what did I say? We need to use y's, right? So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I think that should be enough. Then we're going to plug in our y's, and that will give us our x's. And I'm going to go back to blue here because we're actually graphing log base 2 of x, not y equals 2 to the x there, went because I've switched the x and y. Okay, so to the negative 2, that's 1 fourth. To the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 1 is 2. And 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to graph that first thing. Okay, so we've got 1 fourth negative 2. This isn't the actual graph, this is just the parent. Then we have 1 half negative 1. 1, 0, 2, 1, and 4, 2. And so this is what our parent function looks like, okay? Our parent function of y equals log base 2 of x. But I want to do some transformations on this. And our actual function is log base 2 of 1 plus x, or I'm going to write it as x plus 1 just for consistency, plus 2. Now what does this mean? Okay, the x plus 1 means that we go, remember it's opposite, left 1, and then the plus 2 on the outside means we go up 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this guy, maybe, and move it. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but I'm going to take it and I'm going to move it left 1 and up 2. Once I've finished, I've got this. And so my actual, my function, log base 2 of x plus 1 plus 2, looks like this. Okay? And I can make that one dashed since it's not the actual function. Okay. Just a few more things here. Next we're going to look at domain and range. So not a big deal. We've done this before. The domain, we're starting, it looks like this one is starting at negative 3 and going to the right. We're not including the negative 3, so we use a parenthesis because there is a, an asymptote there, right? A vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3, and that's one of our questions there. And then the range, well, it's starting from negative infinity and going up, and even though it's going very slow... Even though it's going up very slow, it is going up, and it will continue to go up. So our range is negative infinity to infinity. For example, 10 looks like we've got a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, the y-axis. Our domain, then, is starting at x equals 0 and going to infinity. And our range is, yes, I know it looks like it's starting here, but it's, keep, it's going down and down and down and down, so we are going from negative infinity to infinity again.
And then this one, here we've got vertical asymptotes in two spots. We've got one at x equals negative 1. And there's another at x equals 4. Okay. So our domain is starting at negative infinity and going to negative 1 unioned with start picking back up at 4 and going to infinity. And then the range is, yes, it's going down forever and up forever, so negative infinity to infinity. Last example, look at an application. The absolute magnitude, M, of a star is the apparent magnitude, M, small m, a star would have if it were placed 10 parsecs from Earth. Not sure what a parsec is, but okay. The lower the value of the magnitude, the brighter the star. Okay, so get this idea in. The lower the magnitude, the brighter the star. Our sun has an apparent magnitude of negative 26.74. The brightest star in our night sky is Sirius, the dog star, with an apparent magnitude of negative 1.44. Okay? The sun appears so bright because it's very close to us. Sirius is not very close to us. It's farther off, so it doesn't appear as bright to us. This formula relates a star's absolute magnitude, apparent magnitude, and its distance from Earth in parsecs. Okay? So, we're going to find the absolute magnitude. So, if Sirius is 2.637 parsecs, I guess I'm saying that right, from Earth and the Sun is 4.887 times 10 to the negative 6 parsecs, much closer, from Earth, what is the absolute magnitude of each star? So, first, we'll find the absolute magnitude of Sirius, and we just plug into our formula. Our formula has little m, so for Sirius, it says the apparent magnitude of Sirius is negative 1.44. Then we have minus 5 times log of d over 10, and d is the distance from Earth, so we're 2.637. Put that in your calculator, you get approximately, of course, 1.45. Then we can do the same thing for the sun. The apparent magnitude of the sun was negative 26.74, then minus 5 times log of the distance divided by 10. So 4.887 times 10 to the negative 6. Put that in your calculator very carefully, and you get 4.81. So what has this told us? Since the magnitude is larger of the sun than Sirius, then that means the sun is actually less bright. So the sun, in other words, Sirius is a much brighter star. It just doesn't appear to us that way because it's so far off. And that concludes section 3.3.